Now we begin day three with a very interesting leadership keynote on what's coming next. And it is my privilege and honor to introduce our keynote speaker who is joining in from London, Mr. Ralph Simon, who is the chairman and CEO of Mobilium Global London. He is uh, popularly known as the father of the ringtone. Mr. Ralph Simon has enjoyed a spectacular 30 plus year career in a variety of prominent fields like business innovation, media and entertainment, mobile smartphone technology and content investment with BollywoodHangama.com, Exponential Medicine and Health with Singularity University, the Digital Education Moonshot Project with Silicon Valley's renowned education icon, who created Google Education and Business Deals with the major tech innovators from the UK, USA, Israel, Nordics, and leading digital superpower, Estonia. He foresaw the potential of mobile phones and their business impact at the start of worldwide mobile transformation. He has consistently been at the forefront of mobile media innovation, mobile learning and marketing, social media ideation, and latest user trends for brands and business and the latest mobile video usage. Ralph is one of the founders of the global mobile entertainment and mobile social media industry, a visionary innovator, and is popularly known as the father of the ringtone. His current focus with key innovators in business is in artificial intelligence, AR and VR, machine learning and startup investments that grow substantial consumer engagement and major brand impact. He's a great friend of India and West Bengal and over the years has become a distinguished speaker across India. And he's also friendly with West Bengal's own superstar, Arijit Singh. And with Infocom, he goes back a very long way almost about eight years we've known him and we've had him and it's been an honor every time that he's joined us. I warmly welcome Mr. Ralph Simon, my dear friend, and thank him for accepting this request to be a keynote speaker at Infocom. And before I hand over the session to you, a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, there's a Q&A box in case you have questions for Ralph. Uh, please put in your questions and we'll try and get to them at the end of the session. Ladies and gentlemen, the keynote on what's coming next by Ralph Simon. Over to you, Ralph. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's wonderful to be in India and especially on an important day today where the Indian cricket team are facing uh, Australia in the T20. So obviously my thoughts are with India. I always like to support India. And uh, first of all, we'd like to say Aap Nari Kem on Achen to everybody. For those of you uh, who speak Gujarat Kem Cho, for those of you who speak Punjabi to Hada Ki Hai Hai, and uh, of course, those of you that are in Tamil Nadu, we'd like to say FD Urukinga and Vanakam. So um, uh, great to be with you. And today we uh, have an interesting uh, selection. What we want to do is to show you some things that are coming next and what is going to maybe be the next normal. So let's go to our first slide, if we can, please, Bala and Xavier. Here we are. Okay, so what's coming next? What is coming next? It's been such a turbulent time. The COVID crisis has made us change so many different things. And what we're going to do in this session is look at some key new trends and ideas from around the world that could help your business in 2021 and beyond. After all, I'm sure there are many of you that might like to see if you can become the next Harsh Goenka or the next Sanjeev Goenka. You never know. Next slide, please. Okay, so could these new trends give you ideas to drive your success for your business, for your leadership, for your technology, um, and uh, to actually make you succeed so that you can be a prominent company from India that also gets uh, uh, good business from around the world. There's so much potential for good ideas. Next slide, please, Xavier. So, are you ready? I hope you are, because what we'd like to show you first as our first uh, slide is an invention on Earth that is going to be used in the International Space Station in 2021. So uh, let's go to the next slide, please, Xavier. So what you see here is an interesting picture of an astronaut uh, on the International Space Station, but he's actually on the toilet of the International Space Station, believe it or not. Uh, NASA, the Space Administration, which uh, is now using Elon Musk's SpaceX rockets to go up into space, 
uh, had a challenge this year called the Lunar Lou or the Lunar Toilet to design a new toilet for astronauts. Uh, and this was made open to the public just a couple of months ago. The contest was part of the uh, Space Administration's preparations for the Space Agency's program to send the first woman and next man to the moon by 2024 and create a base on the moon that will facilitate missions to Mars. Now, of course, India has its own space program. So when you design a toilet for space where there is no gravity, this really requires you to think unusual ideas. And um, so this particular competition, NASA require, requested that the toilets were compact, function just as well as toilets on Earth, and work in both lunar gravity and microgravity. And the challenge was open to professionals and students under 18, and a prize money of $35,000 was offered. And there have been some incredible um, uh, entries in this competition from students, from university students, and from scientists from all over the world, including from India. So if this is something that interests you, just imagine with space travel in the future, but also new inventive design. India has some of the best scientists and thinkers and innovators in the world. So it's time to sit down and think about invention. Next slide, please. So here's an interesting drone you can see. This drone looks a little bit like an airplane, but this is a service called Zipline, and the government of Maharashtra announced a partnership uh, to bring autonomous delivery drones to India. This is supported by the Indian great Indian company Serum Institute of India that's making the COVID uh, vaccines. They're the largest manuf uh, vaccine manufacturer in the world. They are from India, a fantastic company. And the drone network will provide daily access to critical medicine delivery to India's citizens beginning uh, this year, actually. And Zipline has been providing a medical delivery service by drone uh, for a few years. But this is the way that um, vaccines could be delivered all across India to help all of us um, save India from the terrible ravages of the COVID crisis. Okay, let's go to the next thing and let's stay in our, uh, our airborne line. Uh, believe it or not, this picture that you're seeing here is a flying taxi. Now with the traffic in Kolkata, the traffic in, uh, in uh, Mumbai, the traffic in Delhi, the traffic in all of the major uh, metropolitan centers of India, do you think that a flying taxi service would work? This flying taxi is actually a large drone. It's not a helicopter, it's a large drone. And uh, this is what you're seeing that's happening in Barcelona in Spain. Uh, and um, the idea is that these flying vehicles transport four people, three people, two people around urban areas, as well as use drones for the delivery of goods. And the thing is that uh, as traffic gets worse, and uh, this is a problem we're not going to solve uh, in the near future, maybe there is an opportunity for flying taxi services like this. What do you think? If you think that flying taxi services could work in West Bengal or in Bangladesh, just imagine during the flood season in Bangladesh, this might be something that uh, uh, instead of uh, being in a little tuk-tuk or a little scooter taxi, the cheap way of doing this is having a flying drone. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now, this is a, a variation on the theme of drones and Tesco and Mana are supermarket chains, Tesco in Ireland and England. And what they decided to do was they decided to have a home delivery trial using drones that allowed customers to order small on-demand basket deliveries of grocery and food. And uh, these were assembled by Tesco employees and then flown out by a drone supervisor. And the trial service ran for six days a week and included real-time delivery tracking. Now, of course, in large Indian cities, it's difficult to do something like this. But maybe if there are villages or small areas uh, just outside of, say, main Calcutta, this drone delivery service might be good for delivering groceries or medicines to elderly people who need the extra support. So this is uh, an interesting drone delivery service. Maybe this could be something as an idea for the future. All of you scientists at uh, 
that the IITs uh, or even the IIMs in India, have you thought of something like this that might be able to be used for good purpose and good value and good profits in India? Let's go to the next slide. Now, here's something really interesting. This looks just like a, well, it is a dolphin, but the truth is this is not a real live dolphin. Why is it not a real live dolphin? Well, as you know, we have a huge crisis uh, with uh, the destruction of nature and with the climate crisis. And in fact, just two days ago, the Secretary General of the United Nations said that we are on a suicide run, uh, destroying much of the environment, including animal life. And the same thing has happened to uh, the dolphin population around the world. So uh, this is an interesting uh, company in the United States called Edge Innovations. They're an engineering company that specializes in animatronics. This is when you make either a human or an animal to look real or to look human. And what this company, Edge Innovations, did is they built and created a remote controlled dolphin that's meant to be an ethical uh, alternative to a real wild dolphins at theme parks. Because uh, in uh, the United States and in Europe, there are theme parks that have dolphins that uh, people take their families and their kids to see. And uh, these uh, animatronic uh, dolphins or robots will be safer for visitors to interact with and even swim with. The near identical dolphin replica was developed in conjunction with marine biologists. And how much do you think one of these dolphins would cost to make? Well, one of these dolphins would cost three to five million dollars. Just think about that. That's what it would cost. But um, these uh, creatures uh, are uh, very interesting. And in fact, if you know of a very successful movie called Free Willy or another uh, movie called Anaconda, that same company built these animatronics. There are Indian companies right now in Pune and in uh, Hyderabad and in uh, Bengaluru that are involved in animatronics. So maybe making a dolphin or some other kind of animatronic animal, or even, can you imagine, if you could make an animatronic of um, Shah Rukh Khan, so that if you are a woman that loves Shah Rukh Khan, you can have an animatronic of Shah Rukh Khan in your home with you every day. Let's go to the next slide. Now, here's an interesting um, um, game that uh, was developed. Uh, video gaming is such a huge industry. It's a $140 billion industry worldwide. And this particular game was just launched uh, last month, and it's called Go Viral. And this is where users learn how coronavirus conspiracy theories spread online. A lot of people hear so many strange stories about COVID. Some people are saying that when the vaccine becomes available, you should not get it. Well, that is all uh, conspiracy theories about it. And this particular game is made by the University of Cambridge in uh, the UK and their social decision making lab. And this takes players through three stages, fear mongering, using an expert to, uh, to tell a false story, the art of creating a false story. And during the game, which can be completed in just five minutes, um, the players request claims uh, to their in-game social media account to raise their credibility. And this is a game that actually can also help health workers to show people that sometimes there's a lot of false information about uh, good health and certainly about finding a way to get vaccines for the COVID crisis. So the reason we show this slide is because there are many gamers in India and uh, the whole area of video games is so very, very important. And isn't it strange? Here's one particular video game that is made to try and help people suffering during this uh, awful COVID crisis, which we hope with a vaccine from Oxford University, from AstraZeneca, from Pfizer, and also from uh, uh, India's uh, main vaccine manufacturers, we will see the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so here is an interesting Indian company called Super Daily. And what does Super Daily do? This digitizes India's milk delivery system. And how does that work? Well, 
Super Daily is a digital milk delivery service in India, and the startup received some initial seed investment a few years ago to develop the initiative. And the idea is to provide fresh milk to consumers across Mumbai and across India. It uses a direct to consumer model and the, me, the team finds milk with no additives from local farms because in India, many times milk that goes on sale is often watered down or tampered with to extend its life. So customers order via the super daily mobile app or WhatsApp sites. And the offering includes additional products such as bread, eggs, paratha, um, and, uh, butter and coconut water. And the delivery uh, only costs uh, uh, for ooh, less than half a cent. So this is just a, a few rupees per delivery. But this is just an interesting way in which somebody has developed a digital service. This is almost like uh, the Tiffin carriers, but it's a Tiffin for milk. And uh, Super Daily is an Indian company making some good progress with it. Um, so um, I just heard today that uh, of all the places in India looking for an affordable home uh, for a home purchase, Kolkata just became uh, named as, uh, as the most affordable market of all of India's seven major cities. So I'll tell you the top four, or should I say the four cities where it's most affordable, number one, Kolkata, number two, Hyderabad, number three, Pune, number four, Chennai, and number nine, Mumbai. Everyone knows the problems in Mumbai. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this next uh, very interesting um, uh, is, uh, let's just go to it. Um, Elon Musk uh, and his Tesla uh, electric cars is such a huge uh, success. The Tesla company saw its shares rise by 500% so far just this year and got Elon Musk to be the second wealthiest man in the world after Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. And this is an interesting company we thought we'd show you. It's a Chinese electric car manufacturer called NIO, and they unveiled a special electric battery pack with cell to pack technology just a couple of weeks ago, it was launched. And this basically offers energy capacity that was only achieved before in a Tesla car where there's a fixed battery in the car that you have to charge all the time. This particular battery pack will enable uh, 615 kilometers at 360 miles on a single charge. And you'll be able to simply swap the battery uh, for a new battery um, at the NEO um, outlets. And this might be something in the future as uh, all the world is going to have to choose between electric cars rather than diesel or petrol driven cars, that maybe in the same way as you get uh, batteries for your, uh, for your uh, radio or for your uh, uh, games, maybe these batteries now will be replaceable. And when we in the next five to 10 years think of uh, electric cars, this might be something. Those of you that are in uh, the world of electronics and uh, certainly battery uh, research, uh, the whole quest and the search for batteries that give better power in the modern era where we're going to need more and more battery power rather than electric power. This is just an idea to hopefully stimulate your thinking. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Now, Amazon have been uh, involved in doing some really amazing uh, uh, inventions and innovation. And Amazon usually take four years before they announce an innovation. And here's one that they brought in to improve safety and security in businesses and in public space. So what is this? This uh, was just launched five weeks ago. It saw Amazon announce what is called Amazon One. It's a contactless scanning device that uses the palm of your hand to identify an individual. The device can be used for payment, for loyalty cards, or providing identification for restricted areas. And Amazon claims that the technology protects privacy as an image of the palm of your hand can't easily be used to identify an individual. So um, this is being piloted in two shops of Amazon's in Seattle. But just think about this, and particularly at a time where 
we have to be much more aware of security. Many things that Amazon have developed, and this is Amazon's contactless harm recognition technology. Interesting. And if you think about it, if you've got any ideas, remember we've got a Q&A to send in your question and we'd be happy to answer it. Let's go to the next slide. And uh, here's something interesting, uh, a big new uh, 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 development from the well-known Indian bank ICICI. And ICICI are now offering trade finance services through WhatsApp. Who would have thought that WhatsApp, which was an application that was developed by a young guy from the Ukraine who was living on the floor of an apartment in Silicon Valley, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, found out about him. And from nothing, he loved WhatsApp, and he paid this guy, Mark Zuckerberg, paid this guy $19 billion to buy WhatsApp. And of course, so many people in India use WhatsApp. But here's a bank, a very sophisticated, successful bank that launched a new feature that lets business owners access trade finance services via WhatsApp. Most unusual for something like banking. And particularly when you think of sometimes how difficult it is for banking services to be done uh, with customer ease in India, Customers can create fixed deposits, pay utility bills, access trade finance services through this uh, WhatsApp app. And the new feature enables firms to view information on customer ID, import export code, limit availability of credit facilities, and uh, the status of inward remittances and the history of inward remittances on the go. And uh, this is a really interesting uh, ICICI WhatsApp banking service. It's the 25th WhatsApp services that they bring in. So hats off to ICICI. Maybe there are some banks in West Bengal that could also do this. I'm not sure if any are doing it right now, but there's an idea for the future for those of you in financial services, banking, and also making things easy for consumers. Right, let's go to the next uh, slide. And um, how many of you are familiar with this uh, tablet called Barocca, it actually can help you uh, get over feeling flu or getting a cold. And Barocca actually used a TikTok. Now we know TikTok is banned in India for very good reasons. Um, but uh, what they did was in an effort to convert occasional users to daily users of Barocca, um, this was uh, something that happened in Vietnam where Barocca created a special dance on TikTok. Now, of course, there are um, there are platforms in India that are similar to TikTok, uh, but uh, they basically created a dance challenge. And uh, uh, the pharmaceutics giant that owns Barocca, uh, Bayer from Germany, positioned this dissolvable flavored vitamin as the solution for when you're feeling tired in the afternoon and one that could alleviate signs of stress and fatigue. And uh, what they did was they created a dance using a hashtag and it was incredibly successful. In the first days of the campaign, Barocca videos got nearly 250, quarter of a billion uh, video views, higher than the best, the benchmark estimate, and the campaign saw sales increasing by 230%. So the reason I show you this is you can take a video like a YouTube, or you can take uh, something uh, that is a viral uh, video online, that maybe might use music only, but link that to a product. And that might be something that gets a whole new um, um, consumer interest in your product. Let's go to the next slide. Now, um, when you think of, uh, of uh, thumbs up, uh, the old uh, Indian drink or Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola, you don't necessarily think of one of these drinks that helps you to go to sleep. Well, interestingly enough, Pepsi uh, had just released just five weeks ago um, because uh, with the COVID crisis, more people have been suffering from not being able to get to sleep. They worried about the, uh, the pandemic and can't sleep and there are higher levels of sleeplessness during the, the pandemic. So Pepsi announced the launch of Driftwell and this is a beverage to help consumers unwind before they go to bed. And the idea came after the Pepsi CEO held an internal employee competition 
And the competition was, what can Pepsi create to make a new drink? Well, they all came up uh, internally with a name, Driftwell. It contains 200 milligrams of uh, L-theanine and 10% of the daily magnesium intake, two ingredients to combat stress. And the Sleep Aid drink is now Pepsi's fastest Pepsi product to hit the market. Who would have thought that a, uh, a soft drink company could make a drink as a sleep aid to help people get some sleep during the COVID crisis? Is this the next normal or is this the new normal? Or is this something that we should uh, make sure that after a heavy cricket test, we should uh, maybe give Surav Ganguly or Shubman Gill or Niti Shrana something that they can use to get some sleep after a heavy cricket test? Let's go to the next uh, video. Now, talking about, uh, let's uh, have a look at, uh, at clothing products. Um, <clears throat> there's a, an American uh, shoe maker called Sorconi. They make athletic shoes. And they decided to release a limited edition running shoe that's designed to look like avocado on toast. Who would think of a shoe that looks like food? Well, this avocado toast has got a textured suede upper uh, in avocado green and brown leather with red specks in the lining to represent red pepper flakes. I mean, it's incredible, vindaloo flakes inside the sneaker design. And the sneaker, which uh, the label calls socamole, like guacamole, across the heel of the shoe, sells for 130 US dollars. Now, I think this is, uh, there's there's so, such, such a huge market for sports shoes, for sneakers, um, and it is a, an amazingly huge market. It's not just Nike or New Balance or Adidas, but here is Sorconi realizing if they wanted to have a product that maybe could be successful, make it look like avocado on toast. What do you think of that? Let's go to the next slide. Okay, no problem. Uh, then I think we, let's go to the next slide. Not this one, the next one. Uh, so to finish off today, I thought we'd finish with something really amazing for all of those of you watching that like beer. How would you like to be and uh, go and stay in a beer-centric hotel where you can wake up inside a brewery? Well, a Scottish beer company called Brew Dog, very popular in the UK, have opened the Dog House, a beer-centric hotel that lets, lets its guests wake up inside a brewery it follows a successful crowdfunding campaign. The hotel, which actually is in America, has got an interactive beer museum. It's got a spa with beer treatments. There's uh, access to limited beers. And while, the, while this is going on, the regular rooms are not expensive. There's a beer tap in the room. Uh, and uh, there's also a, a special presidential suite, $2,000 a night, with a bathtub filled with beer. So all those of you who love beer, what do you think? Should Ola open up a hotel in India that is for beer lovers? Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those of you who've been watching, it's always such a pleasure to be able to uh, be with you uh, here in India. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Can we go to the next slide there, please? There we are. So. As you can see, this is very important. Um, uh, what you can see, you can sell. Jo dikta hai, wo bikta hai. Bohat sahi hai. Next slide, please. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. My name is Ralph Simon from London, a big, big fan of Infocom and ABP, and a big, big fan of India with my very good friend. Here's my great friend, Arijit Singh. Let's see if we can get that picture in the screen. Oh. Let's see. There we are. There's Arijit, one of the greatest artists in the world. What a voice. Oh, my God. We know why all of those women love him. Thank you. Thank you, Raki. Yeah. Thank you so much.